My time has come. For those unaware, my formative high school years were during the early 2010s when the countdown community was in its heyday, and boss fights of all kinds were topics of videos. And now, a decade later, holy moly do I feel old, I get to share my personal favorites like my friends and acquaintances before me. Now would probably be a bad time to admit that I'm actually not the biggest fan of boss fights. Which is not the best way to start a video about boss fights, but for me, they are just another obstacle in the way to continuing the story, even if the fight has a lot of significance to it. I don't hate them, I'm purely neutral on them, or have some I really dislike. However, I have come across various boss fights that have struck a chord with me, and here are five of them. Spoilers ahead! These are in no particular order. Is it a bad time to also admit that I'm not the biggest fan of platformers? Oh lord, 2010's YouTube would have eaten me alive! If you couldn't tell, I'm an RPG lover to the core, and I'm really picky about my platformers. 2D or otherwise. Which is why I was completely surprised that the Bowser fights in Odyssey were so enjoyable for me. Bowser's the big bad in Mario. He has to to make an impression on the player. I mean, he's grade A prime cut final boss. But because I'm the weird one here, it took until Odyssey giving me a method to punch Bowser in the face that I got any enjoyment out of fighting Bowser. And let me tell you, the childlike joy I felt fighting the Koopa King with snagging his hat and turning into a round of punch out is a euphoria high I'm not sure I'll ever reach ever again. Sure, there are plenty of other Bowser fights where you are handsy in terms of beating the Koopa King up, but Fisty Cuffs was the way to go. Whoever designed those fights knew what I wanted before I got it. If we got Bowser's theme from 3D World with his style from Odyssey, the Koopa King would be unstoppable, I swear. On to the last, more traditional boss fight I have picked for this list. It has spoilers for the Breath of the Wild DLC. You have been warned. Breath of the Wild is probably one of my favorite Zelda games to date. It captures that essence of doing what you want, when you want it, and the change in design philosophy is one I'm glad they experimented with. I'm also weird about my Zelda opinions because I'm a story person over gameplay most of the time and the fact there are only five main dungeons in the main game before DLC never really bothered me. The DLC dungeon was fun and the reward was rad. However, it was the boss fight for the DLC that blew me away. Color me surprised when I finished the dungeon and the monk said that there was one more task I had to complete so I go up to the platform and suddenly the monk starts to attack me! Not only was the fight itself a surprise, it offered up a great challenge. I love the Odyssey Bowser fights from the kinetic feedback, but I love this one because of how out of left field it is and how on my toes I had to be. It took me multiple tries to beat this boss and the satisfaction I felt when I did it, not to mention the initial panic, ended up being something memorable for me. Next is the last what would most even consider a boss fight. Trust me, we'll get there. Undertale is a game where it is well known for its boss fights, primarily in the No Mercy run. And while overcoming Undyne the Undying was a feat in and of itself, and I'm much too of a cow to go fight Sans, I found my favorite boss fight in the game when I streamed this game for charity in 2020. Mad Mew Mew. Not only is the fight concept hilarious with the mad dummy possessing adult trying to make itself happy for once, this has the best use of turning the gameplay mechanics on its head. Clearly, anime has gone too far. Splitting your heart in half and having the player have to move each part of it separately was an excellent evolution of gameplay. Not only is it the most unique in concept, it's an evolution of a previous fight. Muffet's fight has the player move the heart on strings akin to being trapped in a spider's web. Fantastic, Toby Fox is always thematically appropriate. So how is the Mad Mew Mew fight similar? Not only do Muffet and the Mad Dummy, now Mad Mew Mew, share the same lay motif and music, you're trapped with limited options so you better think on your feet if you're gonna live through to the end. While I adore the characters in Undertale, the boss fights of the true pacifist one are ones I've already seen, and while I liked them well enough, none of them gave me that same spark that the Mad Mew Mew fight did. It was just the right gameplay tweak at the right time that ignited the same joy I felt for all the fights on this list. Spoilers for Danganronpa V3 head, proceed with caution, or throw caution to the wind, I don't know, I'm not your mom! I'm not sure how many people would agree with me that the argument armament segment in Danganronpa V3 counts as a boss fight, but I'm counting it. I warned you this would get weird. V3's Chapter 6 drops some heavy reveals, much like the previous games in the series. In this case, the cast of kids this time were a part of a TV program. But isn't this the twist of the first game? Well, no, because this was artificially created to keep the world appeased. That means all the personalities and talents were created specifically to be implanted on these kids. The placebo effect. Supposedly. Because honestly, how much can we really believe, Samugi? The world is at peace because everyone is obsessed with the in-universe show of Danganronpa? We get in metal, boys! Of course, our remaining characters don't like that very much and want to end the show. Even if it means taking out their own lives to do it, leaving no winner. The problem comes in with Kibo, the ultimate robot, was the audience surrogate the entire time and represents the thoughts and opinions of the fan base and disagrees with killing the game's survivors on ending Danganronpa. 
Thus, the boss fight in Argument Armament. I love this and consider it a boss fight because, let's be honest, saying that the final boss is the entire fanbase of Danganronpa is really funny to me. But also narratively interesting. In order to end everything, you have to convince the people watching that they don't want any more of it either. And you do it the exact same way you've taken down other stubborn people in the past, by playing a rhythm minigame and then putting a phrase together at the end. But the fact that you're slowly convincing the entire world that this killing game should end sparks hope for the remaining kids and the player. And now we end this off with another visual novel, this time made in Game Maker. Finding Paradise, a part of the Simon Court games, have you playing as Dr. Eva Rosalind and Dr. Nir Watts to give dying patients their final wish. In this case, Colin. Funny thing about that though, because in Colin's case, he got through a large chunk of his life thanks to his imaginary friend Faye, based off of a bird he nursed briefly back to help as a child. So yes, the final boss is the imaginary friend of a dying man. I saved this one for last because of how weird it is compared to everything else on the list. And yes, I do count it as a boss fight. You have multiple segmented parts where you have to fight Faye in numerous types of game genres because Neil Watts is the biggest nerd imaginable. Yeah, the controls are clunky, yeah, it's not the most optimized thing, and yeah, the engine really wasn't built to do these kinds of things, but dang it, I love it anyway. The story reasons being the biggest reason why I love this fight so much. Every job the duo does is on a tight time schedule, and right now the doctors are on their tightest schedule yet. Eva's nowhere to be seen, and it's up to Neil to put his imaginary friend in her place and fulfill Colin's final wish. Except, after everything is said and done, Faye herself, at the request of Neil, grants his wish, erasing his memory of the company. Thank you guys for watching! I hope you liked this countdown-like list that I've had in the works for a while now. If you guys like more of this, please let me know down in the comments. Give this a like, a share, It would I would appreciate it so much if you guys did that. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.